Yeah, yeah your window. You said your car windows are open. Yeah, have fun with that. You're gonna fight that. Well, I'd say that's seized up, so. There it goes. All right. We're good. Having the pet cock on the exhaust side of an ATV is really bugging with me here. All right, we're on. We're choked. Just see if she fires. It doesn't blow up. So today we are getting closer. So Josh and I are going to do a little bit of divide and conquer here. Because uh, we might actually, we might get to a first start today. So here, here's, a few uh, here's a few things we need to work through. So handlebars coming together, a lot cleaner setup from what it was. Was not able to get the rear brake cable to really start functioning. The sleeve here, as you see there, starting to pull out of this cable. So we're going to end up replacing this for the rear brake. I have a replacement up there. We're going to see if that actually is the right one or if it's too long, too short. And then we'll get the rear brake caliber, all of that assembled. We have the carb starting to go back together here. But before the carb goes on, we need our plan of attack for the oil pump. <clears throat> uh, that's going to be important there. So we have the tube coming down from the reservoir. So we're going to end up hooking up the tank, putting uh, oil into uh, the tank so it can come down. I could probably try and put a little bit of oil in this pipe, but really I want to see the feed work into the pump. And then as the motor cranks, more on that in a moment, but as the motor cranks, we get oil start squirting out of this tube here, which when we place the hose, will go in to the, the cylinder here. Now we need to be careful because as we keep cranking this motor, we'll end up scoring the cylinder unless it's oiled. So we're going to put um, some oil <clears throat> down the spark plug hole. So as we turn the motor, we're not wrecking our cylinder. Turn it to a point where it comes and it primes the pump, it starts coming out here. We'll put our, our, uh, our tube on here. We'll continue to prime it right to the end. Then we'll put it on. So at that point when we're cranking, we get oil into the engine. So we also got the new belt inner and outer case and enclosing. And this plastic, this is a lot beefier. This is a lot beefier. And this is a slightly different design, but I'm told it's backwards compatible compared to what we took off, which had warped all over the place. Now, one thing I'm noticing already is that I don't have this gasket. So we still might need to come up with that as a component, but that's nice and straight. So we have that. And we came with these kits hardware and came with the boot, which we needed this boot down on the front here to seal this up as this is the intake for cooling. Air is gonna come down through the frame, get pulled in through here, through the belt, spun around and then ejected uh, back up. So we've got some, probably gonna have some homework to do for the gasket around here uh, and how that builds in and seals on the back of the inner clutch plate. We'll get this boot on today. And like I was just saying, first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to test the functionality of this pump. Get some oil down the cylinder so we don't score this. Once we know this is working and we get this primed all the way through up to the cylinder, we'll get our carburetor back on. And really at that point, the only thing we need to do, other than put a battery in, to make sure we don't break anything when we crank, is to get this plate back on. On here we still have to rebuild the pull start but we don't want to put all the pressure on this Bendix without the the housing on this end so we'll get the housing back on uh, and we just won't have the pull start on for first start so we'll go electric and finally I did get a replacement cable for the brake this cable I was not able to get broken out and freed up the whole sleeve inside the cable is starting to pull on the cable itself so if this is the right size we'll get this in and we'll find out and we should have rear brakes and front brakes and we're going to find out if we have enough psi in here to start an idle so i'm going to start with that pump got our various oh i heard them flying Watch out, i heard them land 
I've done this a million times. But I also have plenty of spares. Not yet. Looking for a hose clamp. Well, I have a hole. Oh, you got it? Maybe. Because I have a whole box of fuel line and oil line clamps. Na -na -na. Oh, oh, yep. You got it? It went all the way off. But you might need to just replace it anyways because it's not... It's not a, oh, that's all goobered up. Yeah. yeah, let me get another one. What are we thinking? 10 mil, maybe? This one goes on... I just keep getting away. Run away, run away. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. either going to be a 10 mil or a eight, eight mil. Let's eight see. mil feels tiny. So while Josh is doing that, I am going to get the pull start cover RTV'd on. I always call it RVT. It's RTV. I'm like dyslexic with this stuff. I'm not going to. I'm not going to uh, put that thing all the way on yet. That way we can spin it to whatever way it needs to be. So the Oh, well, it doesn't really clamp part. Still spins. Yeah, it's kind of like between when the 10 and enough, the 8. It's yeah. enough to, it's not coming off. All so. right, we'll go with that. Yeah, I've had to really trying to force some 8s on there. It feels like a 9 mil would have been right. that back the back of the starter yeah okay so i'll figure it out that's gonna be i just don't want to tear a new boot well i actually have two of those boots because they sent me an extra one kind of nice let me get this guy yeah sealed up So one thing I've been learning as we're working through here, as I'm working on getting that pull start case on, is the quad is a mix of, of standard and uh, metric bolts. So you got to be careful. So I'm over here cleaning threads on some of these bolts, and these ones that actually hold the pull start assembly on, they're metric. These came out of the tumbler, all kind of cleaned up, but they still have some media stuck in here for me to pull out of the washers. No big deal there. But I like putting dry bolts through because the cleanup's a lot easier. If I do a wet media in the tumbler, I get a paste all through here. But for these, now that I know the thread pattern, and these are a, uh, oh, it's an M6 one pitch. So I'm just gonna get the, what's left of that media off set my clutch down nice and low so I don't just eat a bolt cutting new threads. Just like that. And there's all the debris coming out. But nice clean threads for that bolt now. All right, so now we have our cleaned up bolts. There's gonna be five that go around here. Right now it's just holding this assembly on. I'll have to take this bolt back out when I rebuild the pull start, put that back in. And ultimately this here is gonna take a, a moment to work on. That's a really long bolt that's gonna reach all the way down in there to hold this. And it's gonna spin the crankshaft when I do. So I'll need a moment on that. And then I have the bottom bolt here. So the Bendix is secure. I am going to put one more in here for our testing today just for good measure, and then we'll move on to the next piece. Thread out this bugger up cable. Yeah, we'll end up, it's all good. 
out of the way. I'm and sure it was just zip tied down there. Yeah, yeah it's I'm all sure. behind the plastics. Yeah. That's all gonna be fine. Our mystery now is to get this cable out of here. And with this cable being so stiff, I haven't been able to get any play back in here. See that spring is all condensed. Gotta get this guy to retract so we can get enough play to get the end of the cable out. Have fun. <laughs> I don't give a whole lot of room to play with, huh? Yeah. Boy, option B is we just cut the whole thing. And then uh, we're not out. using it, right? Uh, let's see here. If I thread this all the way out, I don't buy myself anything, no, do I? No. Nope. We need the play. And you know what you know why we're gonna have to cut it? It's because on another day of the week this cable wouldn't be bound up uh, we would have we'd have enough to push we would be able to push all of that back through which yeah. would then push this out so we can get it so this seized up cable we're going to just use a cutting tool uh, yep i think you're going to fight that yeah Plan C, flip on the air, <laughs> bring up some air, and we'll uh, we'll cut this guy. All right, there we go. So, felt the spring pop. There we go. Now we get all that extra play. Is the idea would be that we could push this cable through. <laughs> kind of fun to do it like this, but uh, push this through and then kind of a weird, but yeah, see now, now that whole piece there could drop through. So, ta -da. so let's see our, so this spring, right? This spring is part of the cable. Go see if the new one has it. It does not. Fascinating. So maybe we uh, we take this out and work out, put the spring on on this one on the bench. Or. Hmm. Where else would the spring be then? Well. That's what's right. interesting is uh, this spring is the seems to me to be the only return mechanism for this cable pull brake, and it can't come off of the setup. Oh, look at that; it's even that's even bound up there. Hmm. All right, so there's the next mystery: is this spring was a part of the original brake cable? It's all seized up. The spring won't fit off the end here, so we're going to have to figure out another spring setup because this is the only mechanism that is doing the return on your brake cable, your rear brake cable. There's no mechanism up here for the return. So we're going to have to come up with something, some other spring that we can put in here. So let's look at this. What can we do? Well, it won't be those springs. But I'm wondering something like this. If it'll fit over. Will it lock in? Yeah, because it should. Oh, don't move that. It'll lock into this. And it should sit right. Should sit inside there, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it won't be able to escape it once it's in. It won't be able to escape once it's in. It's We're going to try this. This little there. compression spring here oh what is this it's a, this they're saying is an inch and inch and three eighths i'm using this spring here by my kit i'll put a link to this if this guy actually works this compression spring we'll have a solution we're gonna go see if we can get a little fancy here as i look at this as well this pad should just be flopping around in here and it is not going anywhere so let me break this pad out We'll see what it has left. Maybe sand it a little bit. So before we build this, that pad needs to be straightened out. Okay. Let's try this. Well, 
well, I'd say that's seized up nice and good. So, something like this, and I can do a little bit of wedge. Yeah, this guy may be a up, oh, move. Good. Something moved. This is all on there nice and tight. You don't need this on we don't need that for test start. Nope. We've just sealed that in with RTV so that the Bendix doesn't have any extra pressure on it. We actually run the starter. So we've pulled the plug here. This is just some 10W30. Just to make sure our cylinder... Ugh. Probably a little more than I need in there, but just to make sure our cylinder is oiled. So let's get our tank set down on and we'll connect up our oil feed line. <laughs> we took the handlebars off for the tank to come off. Yep, it's all right. We just need that oil feed line is really what we need. We just need primed. Actually, well, I mean, this is, yeah, here's a great discussion because, like you said, we had to take the handlebars off to put the tank on. What we can do, we'll put oil in here. We could grab a longer hose for our prime, but then as soon as we disconnect it, we're going to lose our prime. Um, uh, we can't really and we won't be able to do anything with the spark plug once we put the tank on. So we can have our spark plug system all set up. There we go. Now we're thinking. I think that's gonna do what we need there. I don't know, as I'm thinking ahead, I think we're gonna do a little extra hose so that we can, ideally, if this is working, we'll be able to spin this tank around, put it in place without uh, disconnecting and just oil dripping out and all that kind of fun. So, let's, I'm gonna lengthen that hose. All right, so we've got replacement tube on here. It's two inches longer than what we cut off, which will give us enough room to move this tank around, get it back into place, because I'm a little concerned that if I do all this priming, then I have to disconnect this, this tube here. I'll lose my prime. So the hope is that we have enough play here. We can get this set in, still vertical for our feed, yet to be determined, and this is done here. So we're now going to add oil up in here and get our battery and set up to crank and see if we can get... See if we can confirm this pump's actually work and see if we get any output here. And we have oiled the cylinder. Boom. All right, so we're gonna get, we're using uh, snowmobile injection oil. This is two stroke injection oil. So we're gonna get some of this in. And we're gonna actually see, cause this is, looks like gravity feed until the pump kicks in. Can the pump actually self prime? I don't know. Can we see what it gets? It might need a vacuum pull. Yep, so this is what we're gonna find out is, what does it take to prime? Now, it looks like it is right down into top of our feeder, that red there. So hung up in our filter. Let's see if anything gets through the filter. So with fingers clear and all the right things, we should be able to start cranking. The key on, switch on. Yep, just everything look clear. Yep. And then we crank until we prime with the oil in there. But we are not pulling anything down in, so. Not through that filter. Nope. Uh, we're going to have to find a way to prime. We need, to, we need to prime to create some suction, or we've got a buggered up filter, one of the two. I'm going to say I'd pull the filter. Let's pull the filter and see where we end up next. All right, so we were cranking. We weren't actually pulling anything through our feeder tube. As soon as I pulled the tube off of the pump, gravity started flowing the oil right back down. So you can see, other than an air bubble traveling back up, we're prime or the tube is primed to the pump. I'm going to crank again and start watching for, can we actually get anything throughout the nipple there? And 
Okay, so I'm gonna put a little more oil down in here. So is it a bad pump is the question, or is the pub, the pump plugged? If we have to pull this pump, it's a small, like a right angle screwdriver, right angle Phillips to get here and the other side to lift this pump off. I'm getting the feeling we may need to do that. And then ultimately we should be able to meter. Oh, you know what we're gonna do to feed fast? I'm gonna hold open the throttle because that should crank the pump faster. Let's try that. Would have expected some response out of there by now if we're primed all the way into that component so all right so the one on the quad we're trying to salvage it's just not priming it's not pulling any oil down if i pull the the tube off the tank gravity oil flows right through the oil filter right down to the pump but if you crank it's not pulling anything in question is why is it all gummed up is anything plugged in there just don't know the condition so we're going to take the pump off of the other other unit here. And part of this is a pain in the tuchus in the sense that to take it off, you got a Phillips head here, which the only way you're doing that is a right angle Phillips and the same thing on the other side. A uh, bit of a pain as we try to figure out. And the rounding. And the rounding. So they're seized in there pretty good. Uh, this could be a bit of fun. So as we're trying to figure out what our issue is going to be here in the resolution, because getting this pump off a bit of a pain, stuck my, my air over the nipple, see if I could break up any obstruction. And don't know if you could see that, but we're forcing, we're forcing the oil right back up. So I do have free flow through there. Let's crank again. Maybe there was an obstruction. It's a, it's a bit of a shot in the dark, but let's see. So these two Phillips screws, roughly an inch long, hold the oil pump on and with a very small, low profile ratcheting Phillips able to get in there and loosens out and take it out. Now, as we look in here, there's blue oil sitting down in and around there. You saw we filled this with a red oil. So, okay. Within here is a, uh, oh boy, I don't know what I wanna call it, but it's a bit of a dowel with a, a worm gear style that when the crankshaft is spinning, it's spinning, ultimately spinning here, and this is pumping oil. There is really no resistance behind here. So we're gonna take this off, and what I've done is I've loosened this top 10 mil. I'm not gonna loosen both of them because this is a setting on the cable that ultimately it's a, a pronged throttle cable. So when you're working the throttle, you're hitting the gas, but you're also metering how much oil is going to the motor. So I don't wanna goof with the adjustment. So I've just loosened the top screw so that I should be able to Hoping to be able to, ah, I'm gonna have to go the other way. I was hoping I could just feed out right through this. So let me set my top screw back down. So I, again, don't lose my place, but I've got to take the bottom screw off to feed this up and out. So let me clamp back down on this guy. So I don't have to go back through this setting at another point in time to make sure I'm metering appropriately. So with that, let's go and take the bottom off. And now that I've broken the <laughs> residue off that top screw, I want to pay attention that I don't spin that. It's almost like I should be putting a Sharpie line on it vertically to really make sure. And then we're going to take this to the bench so we can take a better look. I think there's going to be a diaphragm in here. There we go. Let's see. See what's going on. Time for a look here. So we're feeding in. So this is the mechanism that's spinning that actually is pumping. What's it going on? Well, let's open the top. If you can see that, those shiny ears there, they look like they are polished off to me. I've got to do a little more homework here. But my thought is that as the motor's spinning and it's spinning this and that gear is turning, that every time those ears go behind, this... Uh, uh, 
no, it's like an ear, that that should be able to push. There we go. Now with the throttle wide open and those part. Okay, we're up. It's functioning. See, it's pushed this up. It's just not as fast as you think. Hard to say. It's Everything's all down. freed up and moving. I think we're going to reassemble and try again here. Let's fill it with oil. Um, if you want to grab the uh, container behind you there, let's just pour some oil into that, top it off, and then I'm going to crank it down. Go change it from blue to red. Change it from blue to red. Okay. Effectively, I've topped that off. That little pin that fell out, whatever what that for. does, it sits down in there. There it is. Okay, the pin is back down in. That's important. I almost forgot there is a gasket we had taken off that goes here. So the gasket's back on, which ultimately implies we didn't need the RTV on there. But we've done it now, so. so this little ratchet tool, super important for being able to get in here with the Phillips. So there's one side. I'm curious. I didn't see any reason why this pump wouldn't function. One thing we didn't check is we didn't crank the motor and look to see if that worm gear that's actually in the motor was spinning to spin this pump. So we're going to end up doing another test here. And uh, if it doesn't work, we might have to backtrack a step just to confirm that we actually are spinning the pump. Might be jumping ahead a little bit, but all right. All right, so bleeder valve is closed right now, but once we get hooked back up, we'll make sure we open that bleeder valve for a test. Uh, Maybe not. How about that? I think I've got a little 8 mils. That looks like an 8 mil. Oh, okay, needle nose. It's loose, so it should spin. There it goes. Oh, here it comes. I saw it. Dr it is dropped. Ooh. It's hard to see on camera, but it dropped right through the air bubbles right on that. It's coming out the top. It is coming out the top of the bleeder. Okay. So that is full. I've got throttle open. So you see me activating there and... Alright, so I, at this point, I believe we have a fully primed pump. We filled in bleeds through, but it is not making its way out here. So one of two things, either those uh, ears on the bottom here. So first we have to find out, is the motor actually spinning the pump? And if it's spinning the pump, that vertical pump shaft, it looked as though there were two ears that as you turn would push it up to kind of like a cam. And they looked flattened out. So... I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to yank, if we can, the one off the other one, do that same disassembly, because if those ears are flat, we'll recognize that. I'd certainly be surprised if the bottom of this motor was not actually spinning. Uh, yucky. Pump number two. Uh, so I just primed this piece of, uh, piece of fill tube right off the other tank there with the thought that we're going to try and just spin this pump with this prime piece of pipe and see if anything comes out the nozzle. So I'm gonna try and hold this pipe up, spin. Yeah, okay. And then it's out. Okay, yep, bleeding. So what I was gonna do is check yep. that in. There it is. There it is. Keep going. Yep. There it goes. All right. So that's red. We have a good pump. I wonder if the other one's good. We just didn't spin it enough. Didn't spin it long enough. Long enough. Because that's slow. Well, we're going to have to take that pump off anyway. And that was with it at full throttle pumping. So we'll have a chance to test it. Here we go. I wonder if you're not supposed to prime the carb, too. There's no oil in the carb, it's just, uh... Doesn't it eject into the carb? No, right it into doesn't. the cylinder. Oh, it just injects straight into the cylinder. Yeah. 
All right, so we know that one pump at least is good. Uh, it took some effort there. Uh, it's the only way we actually saw success is when I had the the throttle wide open and we were you saw us spinning that drill and finally it just kind of started burping through. Otherwise, it's just such a minute amount of oil that it you'd think you were failing. So we know we have one good pump coming off of the other quad. So we're going to take this one off. We're going to do that same test and it seems like our method really is get a piece of get a piece of hose. We filled this with oil to prime it. We were able to use a chuck on the drill just to, as you saw here, just to very gently hold and then spin this in a clockwise fashion, which is to say as if you're driving a, a screw into a wall, you're driving it in, not reversing it out, and then hold the throttle wide open. And we probably had to spin for 30 seconds or so before we effectively or yeah, solid 30 seconds before we drew from the feeder pipe up through and fed it out. And we opened the bleeder and then gravity allowed this to feed as well. So we're gonna try and repeat this test and show it a little better. I think we have at least one working good pump. Okay, here is the original pump. Here we go, to test this, we're gonna get this piece of tube on. There, oh, maybe from the other end, it's leaking pretty good out that. There we go making a mess here already we're going to get this primed by filling this in some real crazy way can i actually just oh ooh, yeah if i go slow there we go holding that up now i'm going to open my bleeder valve to test out pretty quick it's gonna pull through there it is that's slower than before but it's there yep okay bleeder is primed so we're gonna put the chuck on with the drill spinning forward spinning clockwise and then I'm gonna open the throttle lever and we're gonna watch for this one to pump so you've got it, I know you got it on there. Yep. All right, so we're gonna go spin fast. Here we go, I'm throttle wide open. There it goes, all right. We're good. We're pumping red right out, so we have two good pumps. So uh, before we put the pump back in, we actually wanna see the little mechanism almost uh boy i don't know what, really what to call it but uh let me see if i can point this out here so what we want to see we want to spin the motor and we want to see that what you're seeing just that little tip on the end of my finger there spin because that's actually activating the pump so key on switch on does that spin there we go so our pump's activating so we know the motor is spinning the pump we know we have two good pumps we know what to expect and see um it's just you just starting the motor it was not going to be enough motor turning to really get any activation there so we're going to get the oil pump installed all plumbed in but ultimately what we're going to do to try and start this is we're going to put premix in the tank because there's a good deal of priming going through here that really is going to take some time all right so we're getting closer here we've got the the carb hooked back up now and choke we're getting ready to put the air box in there's two different boots that go on here so i had to hunt down the part number for the bottom one has this indent, hooks into the top of the carb up here. And then this this upper one, this feels like a, something off a bicycle tube that should go from the top of the air box over the tube here, the frame tube, because it actually would draw air in up high. So we're gonna see if we can get this pulled together now as we get closer towards cranking and seeing if we have a, uh, see if it'll fire. So we are now looking at, we need to make sure we have oil down the transmission. So we're looking up in the manual what oil should go in there. Do you know yet? The transmission? Yeah, the transmission. The transmission is AP grade SG or SH 10W30. So we're going to check that oil. We're also getting the air box going in here. The two boots now. A little bit of a pain. What I found for getting this boot on is... Uh, Get it on the air box first, roll it back on here so you can set up and then roll it back onto the tube. Seals up really nice and tight. We're gonna get some hose clamps down here and we're gonna drop our filter in. 
So we're running a, a Motul transmission oil, 10W30 in here. Usually I run this stuff in my blasters, but today, today it's going in here and just filling up to the edge of the edge of the fill hole there in the transmission. Yeah, your window you said your car windows are open? Yeah, have fun with that. Well, while Josh goes and closes his car windows while we have a bit of a squall come in here, we're close. We're close. I have to say this, though. Uh, ooh. <laughs> Having the petcock on the exhaust side of an ATV is really bugging with me here because I've got to route this safely away from the head, away from the exhaust, back to the other side of the carburetor. So we have the petcock on this side, and the carburetor fuel intake line on this side. Now, obviously, this is all temporary. I just wasn't ready to start cutting all my line in yet because I'm not happy with this setup. I'm going to have to find a better way, but I'm going to put some clamps on so we don't leak fuel, and we're ready to put some premix in here, uh, 32 to 1, and then see if she fires. And with this nice new clean hose down here, we'll be able to see as it primes up through so uh fingers fingers crossed here so we are gonna try and fire fuel has run to the carb it's not flowing out of the carb air box is hooked up the lid is open let me put our fuel tank lid on a little bit of gas in there key on transmission is not hooked up so this thing can't run away on us Big concern is something getting too hot to the exhaust or motor. We're gonna have some oil there. What's it gonna take? Let me hit it with some starch. Hey, you didn't even open the choke. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's kind of flimsy, huh? There's no... Uh... Also, that would imply we don't have the choke well adjusted down. So if this is not showing any real choke, that's going to be... Oh, all right now. Is it on this? <laughs> Everything is on. The way you... It's all on the exhaust side. So basically, we'd be getting down and extending this guy to take the slack out. What we can do manually is just... Pull it up. Yank on it. And ultimately flip it all the way over. That should be full choke there. Let's get it there. Uh oh. Now this is starter fluid, which for a two-stroke, not a great idea. It does have lubrication in it, so I'm okay. But I feel okay about it. All right, let's check for spark. Yeah, we got good spark. So, um, we have all that oil in the cylinders probably making our everything fire nasty-like. I mean, we are the 100 PSI is not going to be great. All right, we're on, we're choked. Just see if she fires, it doesn't blow up. Should have fired. So I'll mull over. Probably what I'll end up doing is I'll end up checking compression. 